up there in the Yankee bullpen. One out, nobody on. Here's the payoff pitch coming to Reese. A fastball that's inside for ball four. Okay, we draws a one. is on at first. And Magic Casey Stengel is pacing in the Yankee dugout. And I would presume, if I may, that the skipper of the Yankees will not waste much time if the Dodgers uh, start to uh, pepper Mr. Cooks. All right, Reese leads off. Scarlett holds against him. The outfield to the right. The Snyder and the Duke is in there. The pitch is one on his line on the left field. Carrier is guarding that foul line at third. He's playing back about seven steps back of the bag. The check of the runners will pitch to Robinson. A curve that just misses outside. Two balls and one strike. Yogi Berra looks around to look for our Dusty Vargas. An Ashley League umpire today working back to the plate. And the umpiring of this series has been great. Two one pitches. One on a ground ball on the left side. Terry Bobble the ball in last over in foul territory, but up fire Hank Soar down there back to third took a good look at motion foul. So Andy Carey starts breathing again as a founder hit by Robinson bounced off his glove and could have been disastrous. Reese at second, Snyder on at first, they lead off. Man will lose a few steps over left center. The pitch comes to Robinson. A ground ball right back to Cooks. Move back to second. A mark for one to throw the first. Double play. Play going from Cooks, the pitcher, to Billy Martin, the second baseman, to Bill Scowan, the first baseman. And it is a double play. And in the first inning for the Dodgers, no runs on one hit. There were no errors. And one man was left on. And at the end of the first inning, the score, New York Yankees 2, and the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. It's Piggy Bat Jack, Piggy Bat Jill, get paper mates built in square. He's a full paper mate, has a new bed. There's none to compare with the Piggy Bat refill. You've always a fair. With two points, two ink supplies. If you're student, policeman, or clerk, you can be sure with a paper mate. You'll always finish your work. No more aggravation. You won't tear out your hair. See the demonstration of the piggyback's back. Paper mate's a dollar ninety-five. It's the most. It's the end. Why, man alive. Fire paper mate. You won't say it's great when you ride right through the paper, paper mate's pencil. And don't forget the amazing piggyback refill fits all paper made men. Elton Howard moves in now to lead off the Yankees in the top of the second inning. Elton uh, had five hits and 26 times in bat on the series last year. Takes a fastball from Don Newcomb for a strike. 
Howard in the final few weeks of the regular American League season was bothered with a throat and uh, he has not been in any uh, previous games uh, this year. Don Newcomb is ready and winds and the pitch comes and it's one on a miss. So Austin Howard stands in there with a two strike count. Elston had a home run off Don Newcomb last year. The outfield is uh, shaded to the left with Sandy Amaris deep in left field and Duke Snyder out in left center. Jackie Robinson backed up with third. Newcomb uh, winds the deal and it's outside low for a ball. One ball, two strikes. That key double play coming up for the Yankees in the first inning as the Dodgers have two men on and only one out. Got Johnny Cooks out of quite a chance. Elton Howard with a real spread stance waits and now Newcomb delivers to him and there's grab ball to the left side. Reese over to his right, has it, makes a long throw. Hodges reaches, he's out. Fine play by Gil Hodges who really reached out there and with those big hands grabbed that ball just ahead of Elton Howard. The one out and the play goes short for 6-3. Gil McDougall. Gil has two hits and 17 times of bat in the series this year. Has one run better than has walked three times, struck out six times. You can wise, pumps and delivers, and swings and misses as McDougall goes for a fastball and feeds inside. Newcomb perhaps has one of the biggest wind-ups that you've ever seen. He swings both arms. Many people have wondered whether the theory of aeronautics didn't uh, actually help him get up off the ground a little. Delivers a soft curve that's over for strike two, taken by McDougall. And the batters tell me that actually it looks like Mutes are jumping at him. And with that high kick and the arms moving around, it's very hard to pick up the ball. Plus the fact that Mr. Newton can really fire that ball through there. He stands in and he winds and the two-strike pitch to McDougal takes high inside for a ball. One and two. The two runs scored by the Yankees in the first inning have uh, quietened the Dodger rooters down just a little. But they uh, realize that this game has a long way to go. The pitch to McDougal, a curve that misses outside for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. The double play by the Yankees, uh, by the way, was the sixth. They've had uh, many, but none of them started by the pitcher. That's the first one they've had. The Dodgers have eight. There's a liner out in the right field. Give me a pass the ball. Broke to his left, reached up and speared that ball, and McDougal comes talking back to himself as he walks back to the dugout. Jim Gilliam broke with the ball and reared that liner. Now oh, McDougal misses in a bit for a base hit. Two out in the second inning for the Yankees, and Andy carries in there. Andy, right hand batter, bends at the waist. Big Don Yuka Wine pumps a fastball that's too high for ball one. Gary has three hits and 16 times of bat. He struck out five times. And he has a 188 uh, average in the series. And he carries. The outfield, uh, just a few steps around the left. Snyder around in left center. Newcomb's ready in the one ball delivery. is swung on and found back over the top of the road. And it's one and one. Ball bouncing off. The top of the roof was grabbed by a reporter up there. The fans give him a big hand. So it's one ball. Strike with two out. The Yankees lead two to nothing. They have two hits. A single by Hank Bauer, a stolen base, and a home run by Yogi Berra after Martin and Mantle had struck out. And then you could just put the capper to the inning, struck out Bill Scar. So the big guy works, and the 1 1 pitch to Andy Carey is swung on, pumped to the right side in foul territory. Roy Campbell coming back here to the back seat, and he can't quite get to it. Mouths off the ledge of the bat rack, which holds the helmets that the Dodgers use. And the breeze, uh, which we mentioned earlier, is blowing over towards the foul line, had a great deal to do with carrying that ball right over near the stand. So the count is one and two. Blue sky up above and the big, soft, white, fleecy clouds. 
chasing along merrily. As all eyes, ears, and uh, I suppose even uh, fish in the sea are apprehensive about this ball game today. Outside ball for ball two. So it's two balls, two strikes. This is the game of the World Series because this is the one that decides who wears the town jewels and uh, who looks to another year. Two and two. Gary chokes up on the bat about two inches from the end of the handle now, and you can tell with wind up, friend. Here's the 2 2 delivery coming, and it's one and it's fouled off the foot of Roy Camarilla, and he stays alive. Two balls, two strikes. So Roy Campanella gets the new ball from Dusty Vargas, the plate umpire, runs it up, shoots it back out to Big Don Newcomb. Newcomb looking in. Andy Carey standing in there. And here's the 2-2 delivery to Carey, a curve to top side for ball three. Three balls, two strikes with two out. And nobody on, Yankees two, Dodgers nothing. You can try to pitch very carefully to Andy because Jerry uh, has power. And with that short uh, right and left field line, it's not impossible to reach him. It has been reached before. Here's the payoff pitch to Carey. A fastball is inside ball four. So John Newcomb gives up his first walk, and we wait now for Johnny Cook to come up. While we do, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, Radio Network for All America. You are listening to CKLW, your World Series station in this area. 800 on your dial. 27 minutes past 12 noon. This is Bob Neal with Bob Wolf. And standing in there now is Johnny Cooks. Pitcher for the Yankees for his first time. Choke way up on the bat. Takes outside. Squirts away from Kevin Owen. North man straight by Carey. Ball just bounced off the heel of the Texas bit of Roy Campanella, and he retrieved it quickly. He's talking out there to Newcomb as he fires the ball out to him. Campanella, who designed uh, his own chest protector with a high strap that comes up over the left shoulder to give him protection there, but still not bother his throwing with his right arm. Don Newcomb takes his stretch, looks over to carry. The one ball pitch comes to Johnny Cooks, a fastball, two balls, ball two. It's two or nothing, and Campy decides to go have a chat. And Don Pleasant gets up to the bullpen for the Dodgers, and he starts to fire. So Cabanella and Newcomb visit out there on the mound. And Roger Wall Olsen makes the call to the bullpen. And Ed Roebuck joins with Don Pleasant in firing that ball. Now is pulled around to the right with Duke Snyder shallow in right center. Carl Fuller is shallow in right, and Sandy Amherst is protecting out in left. Cooks uh, really chokes up on that bat about a third of the way. He stands in there with a two ball count. Now with Andy Carey leading away from first, holding against the runner is Gil Hodges. We have two out. The pitch counts. A fastball through the middle for a strike. Back with two outs. Don Newcomb pitching at the top of the second, trying to hold the Yankees. They have already picked up two runs. The lead away by the runner, swinging a ground ball, and goes 45. Newcomb grabbed by Perry Reese, who sits on second, and the force of Andy Carey. That ball is forced right through the center field wall, and Andy Carey, unfortunately, was not hit too hard. Reese had a chance to move over and grab it and step on second. So Johnny Cooks gets into a fourth play in the second inning. For the Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors. They left one man on. So Don Houston gets out of that jam. And at the end of one and a half innings of play, the score New York Yankees, two. And the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. Well, certainly we were talking about Roy Cabanello a moment ago and devising his own uh, chest protector. His ability to handle these pitches has really been something for the Dodgers. You know, you ask Roy a question and you get a quick, positive answer. Listen to his reply to a direct query in a recorded interview. I've tried to others, and I can tell you, this is the only way to get a decent shade. A Gillette razor and a Gillette blade. That's putting it on the line for us, Roy Campanella. A Gillette shave is clean. 
clean and then stop. What's more, it's fast and refreshing. One Gillette Super Speed Razor, the light, regular, or heavy, is made to match your face. You get comfort like you never had before because one of these three has it for you. It has the precise blade edge exposure, angle, and weight to suit your combination of skin and beard. Exactly. Get it, man. Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and Travel Case, $1. Whether you get the brand new Best Pocket Edition, the Encyclopedia of Baseball, free. If you act fast, that is, fans are snapping them up. Gerald Hodges will be the first batter for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the last half of the second inning. Gill has seven hits and 20 times at back. Two doubles, a home run, he takes a strike to serve on the outside corner. Johnny Cooks, the young boy of Hoboken, who must be realizing the thrill that almost every youngster in America has dreamed of. Starting a World Series game, strike two call. Fastball has popped over the outside corner. Looks in as Hodges stands in there with a two strike count. Pitch comes to Gil Hodges, a curveball way outside. One ball, two strikes. Gil so far has eight runs batted in, has walked uh, four times, four strikeouts with one home run. Johnny Cooks is ready, delivers a curve outside. By the way, uh, Hodges has already tied. Out of record. Held by uh, Goose Goslin, Al Simmons, Bill Nicholson, Eddie Snyder, the Duke. All right, the third is outside for ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Uh, shouts out some encouragement out there to Gil Hodges who's trying to get on. And Johnny Cooks is ready and the payoff pitch comes to Hodges and he swings a ground ball to Andy Carey, big hopper, and Carey fires across to first and Scourin has it, he's out. So the play goes from Carey to Scourin. And there's one out for the Dodgers in the second inning. is in there. Sandy has one hit from 16 times at bat in the series. Sandy has one RBI. The pitch by Johnny Cook. The ground ball to the right side. Moving to his right is Billy Martin. He grabs the ball. He fires it across. And he just gets the runner by an eyelash. Sandy Amherst can really pedal down that line. And he was uh, moving. Martin got the ball on actually in the fingers of his glove. He just got it over in time. So there's two out for the Dodgers in the second. And the runner is Carl Frollo. With five hits and 22 times at bat, hitting 227. The strong man of the Dodgers, great throwing arm, fine outfielder, and a big man of the wood. Looks as though his wind up, and the pitch comes to Perlo, a fastball that ticks off his bat, and it's strike one. Perlo tried to pull back out of the way. Campanella on deck for the Dodgers. The Yankees, too, the Dodgers, nothing, were in the last half of the second inning, two out. One strike to Perlo, swings over at close stance, and beats the right hand batter's box. Cooks is ready. Delivers a ground ball to the second base from Billy Martin, in with it, and flex to first, he's out. So, in the second inning, the Dodgers pops out, third to first, second to first, and second to first. The last of the second inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and Nobody left on. And at the end of the second inning, the score, New York Yankees 2 and the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. Look sharp. Feel sharp. Be sharp and listen to this girl.
cheering moves in for the seventh game of the World Series. And Don Yukon will uh, go against the top of the order. Facing Hank Bauer. Bauer now has a 9 for 27, which gets him up into the 333 department. One of the best years that Hank's ever had in the World Series. So Hauer, uh, Bauer, the counterpart of Carl Brillo, stands in there. Where's number nine? The outfield for the Dodgers now moves deep with Sandy Ambrose, deep in left field, Snyder deep in center. Brillo shaded over near right center. Jackie Robinson two steps off the grass at third, Reese deep in short. Here's Duke come into the windup, and the pitch comes back. Bauer swings and misses for a strike. That's ball, right across the letters. The Yankees leading 2 nothing. Sun coming out, shining brightly. But there's a crispness in the air. Duke come is ready, and the pitch comes to Bauer, and he pushes a button on the first base side, grabbed by Gilly, but throws over his guy. Pushed that ball by the mound, but got too much of the wood on it and pushed it down towards the second baseman. And Gilliam was there quick enough to grab it and fire it first. Bauer's out. So Bauer with a good idea. The uh, Yankees, I think, had intended, if uh, they were not able to score early in the game, to punt a little against Newton because they feel that when he delivers the ball, he is not in position to field. Pitch is off his bat. Martin falls down, and the umpire immediately signifies the ball glance off the bat instead of hitting him. So it's one strike. Bukem, with his big kick and his follow through after he delivers the pitch, he is off balance over towards uh, first base. Jackie Robinson moves in one step off the end of the grass at third. Bukem winds, and the one strike pitch to Billy Martin is on its way, and it's outside for a ball. Martin shortened up just a punt. The outfield play is uh, fairly straight away. John Newcomb looks to Campanella, reads his sign in the 1-1 delivery. Four on a ground ball on the left side, Billy Ruth breaks to his left, he can't get it. It's in the left center field for a base hit. Billy Martin makes the turn at first, hustles back, as uh, Duke Snyder pumps that ball in the ring. So Martin flashes a single into Center field. 7th for Millie. Runner on first base for the New York Yankees with one a one out. And up there now is Mickey Mantle. Mickey struck out in the first inning. Don Newcomb checks mark, a dangerous runner. The pitch to Mantle. Swings and misses for a strike. Newcomb just reared back and fired that fastball through there and Mickey went a fishing. Mike and Crosetti coaching in third, clapping his hands, shouting for courage, but into Mickey Mantle. And the bullpen for the Dodgers again becomes alive with Roebuck and Besson working. The outfield pull to the right. Here's the pitch to Mantle. Wings misses, right two. So the Brooklyn fans are. Uh, here, and Newcomb pushes two strikes by Mantle. Martin leads off, the pitch to Mantle, swings and cuts a foul back over the top of the roof. And the count remains to Mickey, two strikes. On deck is Yogi Berra. He was the man with the home run in the first inning, with Bauer on second and two out. They put the Yankees ahead, two to nothing. New York, two runs, three hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, one hit, no errors. Martin again jumps off to a lead. And the two-strike pitch to Mantle is high outside of fastball, one and two. Don Newcomb uh, put every ounce of his strength back to that ball. Duke Snyder moves over a few more steps in right center field, and he's deep, and Perlow is in the shadows of the scoreboard. Here's the one-two pitch. Mantle's right three. So Mickey Mantle for time in today's game and going down on strikeouts. And that is the fourth strikeout for Don Newcomb. So Yogi Barra is up now with two out in the top of the third and Billy Martin on at first.
Yogi, off of that bat, left hand batter, the pitch by Newcomb, and uh, strike. Over the outside corner of the plate, just above the top. One strike to Lawrence Barra. Martin again, leading away. Hodges holds against him. Martin jumps off two, three steps. He takes the go, and the pitch is outside for ball. One and one. One ball and one strike with two out. Don Newcomb pitching here to the Yankees, the top of the third inning. And pitching against a very dangerous hitter, which Newcomb has already discovered, much to his dismay. Newcomb reads his sign, checks the runner at first base. Billy Martin ledges off. Here's the kick. The pitch comes down to Barra. He takes the strike. Fast ball over the outside corner. So Newcomb ahead of Barra. One and two. One ball and two strikes. On deck is Bill Scourer. Newcomb goes to Rosenberg. Looks in again to Campanella, reads his sign, checks the runner at first. Billy Martin leads away. The one two pitch to Barra. Swings and he now tips it and is dropped by Campanella. So a life for Yogi Barra. One and two. Yogi piling it off. The midst of Roy Campanella. Martin again jumps off for a lead. He's four steps away from first. High just holds against the runner. And they pitch to Barra. Slices this one downstairs. Down to the box seats. Barra just reaching out, trying to protect that plate. Newcomb trying to find that outside corner and almost got it. So it's one and two now with Yogi Barra standing in there. The Yankees hanging on to a two to nothing lead. Newcomb trying to pitch his heart out. Trying to do something that he's never been able to do before. Win a World Series game. The look to Martin, who leads off. And the pitch comes to Yogi Barra. Swings and misses. Right center field. That ball is going deep, deep, deep. And it is going to go for a home Sure, you'll like it. In the last half of the third inning, 
with the Yankees taking a 4 to nothing lead. Here is Roy Campanella leading off for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Johnny Cook's on the mound. The right-hander is ready. Delivers a curve that is a foul upstairs. And beats trying to back away from the pitch. Fouls it off. Kathy Lauren, that bat right on the end. Johnny Cooks is ready and has a curveball. A ground ball to the right side. Billy Martin takes it on the short hop and pumps it over to the first base and out at first. So Campanella bounces out. Billy Martin to Bill Scowron. Second of first. is one out for the Dodgers in the last to third. And Big Don Newcomb is going to come up and back for a shot. is up there now. You come the big man with the bat. Here's the wind up from the pitch to Newcomb, a fastball first strike. You know, the second home run by Yogi Farah gives him 10 runs batted in. Pitch to Newcomb inside. One ball and one strike. It's the most runs batted in uh, in series history. The last uh, break record was set by Lou Gehrig in the four-game series of 28 when he drove in nine. That uh, Mason, by the way, is in the second. The wind-up of the pitch by Johnny Cooks to Newcomb is a little dribbler out in front of the plate, and Cooks has it, takes it over to Scour, and he's out. So Newcomb goes out. Johnny Cooks, the pitcher to Bill Scowlin, the first baseman. And there's two out for the Dodgers in the last and third. And the top of the order now coming up. Julia Gilliam is in there. The switcher bats to the left side this time, and he takes a ball outside. Gilliam with two hits and 21 times at bat. Johnny Cooks, who's given up only one hit, is ready. He works and deals a fastball on the outside corner for strike. One and one. One ball and one strike. As Johnny Cooks looks out to center field. And looking back at him is Mickey Mantle. Wind continuing to blow off towards right field. The twines and the 1 1 pitch is a curve that breaks inside, taken for ball two. Two balls, one strike. The Yankees leading 4 to nothing on successive home runs by Yogi Parra. Hitting one in the second inning with Hank Bauer on. Hitting one in the third with Billy Martin on. The pitch to Gilliam, a fastball to strike two. So it's two balls and two strikes now to Jim Gilliam. And he stands back in there. McDougal like shaded over near uh, second base. Martin back at second and Scott at deep at first. Here's the 2 2 offering by Johnny Cooks. A curveball. It's sliced down the left field. Alston Howard backs up a couple of steps. He's got the range and he's got it for round number three. So in the third inning for the Brooklyn Dodgers. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And Johnny Cooks. Continues to pitch masterful ball here in the seventh game of the World Series. At the end of three innings, the score, the Yankees four, and the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. Yesterday's game was uh, certainly a thriller, and what game hasn't been? Tom Levine finally coming up with a big victory and deserving after the great relief work that he performed the Dodgers in the regular season. You know, Clem has uh, never had a losing season since joining the Dodgers in 1950. He posted his best mark in 1955 when he won 13 and lost 5. Clem, uh, who's known to his intimate friends as Clement Walter Levine, was born in Lincoln, Rhode Island, August 1926. That's right-handed. He won the first game of the 1955 World Series. You can put your finger right on facts like these in a jiffy with the new condensed edition of the official Encyclopedia of Baseball. 
a handy 320-page book that contains the cream of the big comprehensive standard authority. It's yours free with purchase of the Gillette Super Speed Razor at the regular price. Get yours. The supply is limited, and they're going fast. Elston Howard will be the first man up for the Yankees in the top of the fourth inning. He bounced out short to first his last time up. Don Newton, working out there, starts into his windup, and the pitch coming to Howard. Fastball is just outside for ball one. The big guy is a little disheartened at the moment. He's been able to dispose of the Mammals and the Scourums and the Howards, but the Barras. There's a curve, sliced down in the right field, going back, it's Bob Blue, and they carry it, and the wind takes it over the top of the scoreboard for a home run. So Elson Howard hitting to the opposite field, lines a home run over the top of the scoreboard in right center field, and Don Fessel gets up, and here comes Dodger Walt Austin. to nothing for the Yankees on five base hits. Three of the five have been home runs. By the way, the Encyclopedia Baseball shows that Howard's home run breaks the World Series record of 10 by one club, the Yankees, uh, back in 1952. So the Yankees uh, go over the big long ball have uh, pushed up a big five to nothing lead. But uh, remember, in the second game, the Yankees were leading uh, six to nothing, and the Dodgers came bouncing right back. And uh, the Dodgers are a fighting ball club. They strapped all the way during the regular season of the National League. And they're playing in a home park, which is uh, always tough. So that apparently is going to be all for Don Newcomb. Big New Newport, three innings. He is charged with five runs. From five hits. The guy walked one. And he struck out the side in the first inning, three. And he had one strike out in the third for four. So down Newcomb. Very discouraged and his heart comes to the dugout of the Dodgers. And Don Fesson goes to the mound for Brooklyn. Fesson is coming along. Don uh, worked seven innings previous uh, to today. Gave up seven hits. Four runs, one of those, uh, all of those being earned, apparently. Beg your pardon, two of those uh, were earned. And he gave up uh, two base on ball, struck out four. Committed one wild pitch, and he was the winning pitcher. So Don Besson, who has a good fastball, he is ready to come off. Listen, uh, was the winner in the game, the second game of the World Series, when uh, Don Newcomb started, was chased after one and two-third innings. Don came on in the third inning, and uh, he was very stingy. So Don Besson, number 46, comes on to see what he can do about stopping the Yankees and holding them down while the Dodgers try to solve the offerings of the right-hander, Johnny Cooks. Besson digging out there on the mound a little bit to uh, fix the footing so that it'll be a little more to his liking. And the outfield for the Dodgers straight away. Jackie Robinson at third is backed up just a few steps off the edge of the infield grass. Besson, the right-hander, winds and delivers to McDougal. It's a strike over the outside corner. McDougal line to Jim Gilliam his last time up. Right hand batter holds that path out on the end. The Yankees five, the Dodgers nothing. Top of the fourth, pitch. Hold on and a little.
Harold Popper back to second. Right back there, Jim Gilliam. Back on the edge of the grass, he's got it. Round number two. Well, McDougal cannot get by Jim Gilliam. That's to the second side. Gilliam has taken care of McDougal, and there's one out. The batter now for the Yankees, Andy Carey. Carey uh, drew a walk off the offerings of Don Newcomb. Lesson looking into Roy Campanella. Starts into his windup. The pitch comes, and it's lined over the top of the roof. Foul. Don uh, wears glasses. And as we mentioned a few times before, he is a great example of individual courage. There's a swing and a foul at the plate. Don has had to go through some rather serious medical treatment and surgical treatment through his own perseverance and desire to continue in baseball. Spent a year sleeping on the floor and to take corrective exercises. But he was determined to come back and has made it. Terry stands in there, bent at the waist, looking out. Two strikes, one out, nobody on. Don Besson is into his windup, and the pitch comes to Andy Carey. Swings on the ground ball left side. Peely Reese to his left. Ball strikes off his glove. And Carey streaks in the first, and he's in. It is an error. Third to the little colonel, Pee Wee Reese. That is only the second error for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the series. That the other error, I believe, was charged to Charlie Neal. The Yankees have had six errors in the series. No Andy carries on at first. One out of the batter is Johnny Cooks. Johnny uh, Porsche. Andy Carey in the second inning for the final out. Besson looks to first, and the pitch comes to Cooks. A little on the first baseline. Coming in is Gil Hodges. He's got the ball. He throws it over to Jim Gilliam. And the sacrifice is good as Cooks moves Carey to second. And the play going three to four. The first baseman, Gil Hodges, throwing to Jim Gilliam, coming first. So the Yankees have a runner on at second base, two out, and the batter now at the top of the order for New York, Hank Bauer. Bauer singles and rode home on Yogi Berra's home run in the first inning. He bounced out second to first in the third. So Bauer has one for two. He has nine for 29. Gary leads away the pitch to Bauer. He takes a fastball. It fell high over the outside corner for a strike. Don Besson, relieving Don Newcomb here in the fourth inning. And after the Yankees, had pushed over five runs. Two home runs by Yogi Berra, one by Elton Howard. Pitch is a strike call. Good slider, cut the outside corner. So Besson, flare ahead of the batter, and Maher steps out. Take a little stroll, he's back in. And the Amaros surround in left. Duke Snyder a few steps over in left center for the Dodgers and the lower right. Left side of the infield for Brooklyn backed up. Andy Carey leads away from second. Don Besson looks at him. Here's the kick and the pitch comes down. Devour. Now ball to the right side. Gilliam to his right. One step. Big hop. Fires to first. He's out at first. And a very close play as Jim Gilliam just gets the ball over ahead of Hank Bauer. Was looking at the umpire as he went by, figuring that he might beat that one out, but he didn't. And for the Yankees in the fourth inning, they come up with one run on one hit. There was one foot on error and one man left on. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, the score New York Yankees five and the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. Well, Bauer and Billy Martin both have been uh, aggressive scrappers for the Yankees. Uh, or making great throws, feeling, and there's always danger to that bat. Jim Gilliam just gets the ball over ahead of Hank Bauer. Bauer was looking at the umpire as he went by, figured that he might beat that one out, but he didn't. And for the Yankees in the fourth inning, they come up with one run on one hit. There was one foot on error, and one man left on. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, the score, New York Yankees five, and the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. Well, Bauer and Billy Martin both have 
been uh, aggressive scrappers for the Yankees. Uh, Paul making great throws, feeling, and they're always dangerous to that bat. You know, the Dodgers have been plagued by a man like that all season. Milwaukee's Johnny Logan. He's aggressive, he's tough, and he's got the beard to go with it. But Johnny's always clean shaven. He keeps that way with a Gillette Super Speed Razor. Now, if you aren't getting easy, good-looking shaves that give you a lift, here's the word. You need the Gillette Super Speed Razor that's scientifically right for your combination of skin and beard. There are three, light, regular, and heavy. They meet the requirements of all men. The light has minimum blade edge exposure and the right edge angle for men with sensitive skin and most younger men. The regular is for average skin and beard. And the heavy with greater blade edge exposure is for men who like to have some feel of a heavier razor. Each is made in one piece for fast blade changing and is cleaning. A dollar buys your Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and Skyring Travel Case. And if you act fast, you get the best pocket encyclopedia of baseball absolutely free. Johnny Cooks delivers to Pee Wee Reese inside. Two posts for ball one. The Yankees lead in the ball game five to nothing. Last half of the fourth inning. Reese Moore in the first inning, and Cooks is ready. And that's a fastball inside for ball two. Reese looks down to Billy Harmon, coaching at third. He's back in. Duke Snyder on deck for the Dodgers. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way. A fastball inside for ball three. So the first three deliveries by Johnny Cooks to Pee Wee Reese are inside. Pee Wee again takes a look down to Billy Harmon coaching at third. Jake Fiddler coaching at first. The windup by Cooks and he deals on the three and nothing and it's ball four. So, Pee Wee Reese, the first man up for the Dodgers in the fourth inning, draws the walk, and Duke Snyder is due up, and Yogi Berra goes to have a talk, and while he does, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is CKLW, your World Series station in this area, 800 on your dot. This is Bob Neal with Bob Wolf in Evansville, the seventh game of the World Series. Duke Snyder stands in there. Reese leads away. The pitch comes to Snyder. A grab ball to the right side. Taken by Scott and throws to second for one. No chance for a relay. So Reese is fourth and second on the play going from Bill Scott to Gil McDougal. Snyder topped that ball, and for a moment it looked like it might turn out to be what they used to refer to as a Baltimore chop. Scott had to take it on the short hop and got it over to McDougal just in time. So the fourth play goes from three to six. Snyder with a life at first base. One out in the last of the fourth inning. Yankees five, Dodgers nothing. Jackie Robinson, the batter. He did a double play in the first inning when he hit a tap right back to Johnny Cooks. The outfield full of the left. Johnny Cooks looks to first, the pitch to Robinson. He tries to run, he pops it up in the air, racing the board as Johnny Cooks and grabs it. Cooks and Mara and Carey all converging. And it was Cooks who made the leap, looking like a basketball player, going up for the layoff shot. And he grabbed the ball for the out. So Robinson tried to run, pops out and fouls out to Johnny Cooks. Again, Tom Sturdivant out there in the bullpen goes to work for the Yankees. certainly helps the team when you have a pitcher that can move over and feel his position so well. So just kept running. The batter is Gil Hodges. Gil bounced out to third to first his last time up. Bend of the waist and the pitch is a curve that snaps over the outside corner for a strike. Last half of the fourth inning. The Dodgers have one hit, the single by Duke Snyder in the first inning. Johnny Cook says walk two to walk three. Both times. He's ready in the swing and a foul off the facing of the railing in front of the box seat. The gentleman out there trying to get it. Dan Park gets to it. Jay Cutler retrieves it. It's two strikes and two out. 
and Hodges is still in there. Scourin at first base playing back of the runner, Duke Snyder. McDougal is uh, deep at short. Terry guarding that foul line at third. Power deep and left. Mantle around in left center. Here's the pitch coming to Hodges. The fastball is just outside. Ball one. One and two now. The big five runs the Yankees have up there has uh, kind of uh, reduced some of the spirit of the ball game. Looks again, looks to Snyder, and the pitch comes to Hodges, who lines it. One hopper, Billy Martin and grabs it, and goes to first with his throw to scour him out. A liner that lost its zip and dropped right in front of Billy Martin. On the short hop, he pumps it over to first. And the play goes 4 3. And in the fourth inning, for the Dodgers, no runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on. And at the end of the fourth inning, the score is New York Yankees 5, the Brooklyn Dodgers, nothing. John Besson, who came on in relief of Don Newcomb in the fourth inning. And we'll just close without any further scoring uh, of the Yankees. He's out there now taking his uh, warm-up pitches. And the first batter he'll face at the top of the fifth inning for the New York Yankees, Billy Martin. Martin with one hit and two times in fact. Struck out the first inning off Newcomb. Singled off Newcomb the third and rode home on Barra's second home run of the game. The Yankees got their first two runs on a single by Hank Marr in the first inning. He stole second. Newcomb struck out Martin and Mattel. But then Marr came through with a home run. And Marr coming through with a home run again in the third inning. Two out and a runner on. Then Elston Howard made it 5 to nothing for the Yankees with a leadoff home run in the fourth inning off Don Newcomb. And uh, that was the end for Big New. So the big guy who certainly had one of the great seasons of any pitcher in modern time. Another foul off the facing right in front of us, and the range is getting better. So it's one strike. The boys are getting the range. We better fire and fall back, man. The pitch comes to Martin. It's low for a ball. One and one. Fastball. It was a little too low. One ball and one strike. The Yankees leading in the ball game five to nothing. We're at the top of the fifth inning. Now our best working. Besson looking in. Billy Martin holding that bat right on the end. Close hands. Boy waiting. And the pitch comes. And he swings on it. Pops it. Throwing back over the top of our head. Ball and two strikes. One and two now. This is the seventh game of the World Series. All tied up. And the Yankees bidding a fairly well at the moment to uh, grab it and run. They lead five to nothing. Here's the pitch. Oh, there's Ricochet all around us now. So the count is still one ball and two strikes. I think somebody better come up with a catcher's mask for me. No, the counter man is one and two. Billy Martin sending a few souvenirs back this way. Outfield straight away for the Dodgers, and the infield is backed up on the left side. Martin steps out, and part of the Dodgers all the time. Object for New York, Mickey Mantle, who has struck out twice. This will be his uh, first appearance against Don Messi. Lesson's ready. The one-two pitch drop on left side. Jackie Robinson has it and fires it across to Hodges, who has it. He's out. So Billy Martin grounds out. Jackie Robinson to Gil Hodges. And the play goes 5-3. Now the so here's uh, Mickey Mantle stepping in. Mickey uh, had no success against Don Newcomb, although Yogi Berra bats in the next spot has fantastic success with two home runs two times the bat. Pitch by Messon to Mantle is caught on and foul back on the screen. The 
Kentucky uh, looks out to listen as Jackie Robinson moves in on the edge of the infield grass, trying to protect against Mantle dropping a punt. The outfield polarized, right side of the infield backed up. Kevin Gilliam practically on the edge of the outfield grass at second. One strike pitch, fastball inside, too close, Mantle backs away. One and one. And Don Besson is ready, and he shoots a curve in too close for ball two. Mickey Mantle standing there quietly. Mantle goes as far back in the batter's box as he can, and left foot right back on the rear restraining line. And he waits for the ball to break. Besson shakes off the side. He's into his windup now, and the 2 1 pitch to Mickey Mantle. second Yankee to be walked so far in the game. Harry drew an unintentional walk in the second inning, but Barra draws a walk, and it's uh, completely intentional, and there's no doubt in anybody's mind about that one. Bill Scowron is in there now. Bill struck out in the first inning, and he popped out to the second baseman on the third. Right-hand batter. Man on at second. Barra at first. One out. Top of the fifth. The pitch comes. Swung on. A fly ball. Popped out into short right center field. Jim Gilliam backpedaling just a few steps off to his left. He's got it. There's two out. As Scowron pops up to Jim Gilliam in short right center field. So Elston Howard, who slashed to home on in the fourth inning, off Don Yukum. Is in there. The Yankees lead in the ballgame five to nothing. Roger Craig and Ed Robuck are working in the Dodger bullpen. It's coming to Howard's now ball. Grab by Hodges who waits for East to step on second and the force is on Barra. And the play goes three to six. Now the fifth inning for the Yankees. They have no runs. They had one hit. There were no errors. And there were two men left on base. And so at the end of four and a half innings of play, the score is New York Yankees five and the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. You know, Hodges, uh, man made a great grab of that ball. He's known as a hand. He's got a tremendously big hand. But he can also uh, swing that bat, hitting about 350 in the series, has eight RBIs. You know, in the last 50 years, four Dodgers have won the National League batting title. You can see who they were by turning to the all-time league leaders section in the best pocket edition of the Encyclopedia of Baseball. Now, this handy book digests the big standard authority that sells for $5.95, and it's free with purchase of the Gillette Super Speed Razor at the regular price. This valuable book contains the Major League roster, records of over 600 players and managers, all-star game results, Hall of Fame, game-by-game summary of every World Series with winning pitchers, attendants, home run hitters, diagrams of big league parts, plus a load of other information to make you a hot stove lead expert. Now, the supply is dwindling. You better get yours before it's too late. Just ask for the Gillette Super Speed Razor with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser and Travel Case at the regular price, $1. The book is attached, and it's free. Last of the fifth inning, and to carry you on, a young man I've enjoyed very much.
Hart working with Bob Wolf. Thank you, Bob Neal. Sandy Ambrose steps in now to face Johnny Coates. The right-hander delivers at the first pitch is wide and low, and the count ball on to Ambrose. With the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers certainly having been backed against the wall here as we come into the uh, last half of the last game. Here's the next pitch. And it's over the outside corner for a called strike. And the count is one and one to Amaros with Perillo and Campanella to follow. Johnny Cook with his first big league start in the World Series competition. All right-handed. Here it comes. And there's a foul off to the left. Two strikes, ball one. Johnny had a fine season pitching for the uh, New York Yankees. Turns his back to the mound. So far this afternoon, the outfielders haven't been too busy. As a matter of fact, only one outfield put out for New York. There's one sliced out to left, and Elton Howard is waiting, and he has it. Amaros is out, so that means there have been two outfield put outs registered by the uh, New York Yankees, and Howard has the ball. So far this afternoon, Brooklyn has had no outfield put outs, but their outfielders have spent some time during the uh, course of the first half of the game looking at balls, sailing up over the fence. Carl Perillo is grounded out. He steps over the second time to face Johnny Cooks. And they're playing Carl now, slightly toward right. Here comes the pitch, and it drives him back from the plate for ball one. It was high and inside. The win appears to be coming from the left field corner toward the right field line, sweeping across the field. There's a ground ball, which is taken by Andy Carey, going to his left. Fine play for the first, and Perlow is out. Andy Carey darted to his left, made a good stop, and throw, and there are two outs on the home set. Roy Campanella is coming up. Roger Craig. Now starts throwing in the Dodgers bullpen as Campanella steps in. Here comes the pitch, and it gets the outside corner for strike one call. Thus far, the only hit by the Dodgers was Snyder's single to left, a clean single in the first inning. The Yankees have had six hits, and they lead by a 5 nothing score. Campanella waits for strike one to count. Hopes delivers, and he moves Cappy back with a curveball, which didn't break far enough. Count of one and one. Johnny Cooks, 23 years old, was an 18-game winner, plus nine for New York. Starts going up to cap one and one. He delivers a changeup, and it floats over the outside corner for a call strike two, as Cappy watched it. That one made the crowd hustle. As Cooks gave the big windup that time and just pulled it off the pitch. Two strikes to the ball to Campanella. Two outs, nobody on. A curveball set on the ground out to McDougal. He takes the big hop, throws up the scow, and Campanella's out. The side retired. The up and three down on the home bit. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no left. And the score after five and eight. The Yanks 5 on the Dodgers coming. Here's a message we've been asked to give you in the public address. Nine out of every ten forest fires are caused by human carelessness. Last year, this reckless vandalism blackened an area half as large as the New England states. This shocking national waste in the United States and Canada is all the more shameful because a little common sense and care could prevent it. It takes just one fatal moment of carelessness with match a cigarette to send wildfire blazing through our resources of timber, water, and recreation that was centuries in the making. Protect these precious possessions that belong to you. Follow these simple rules. One, crush out cigarettes, cigar, and pipe ashes. Two, break matches and chew after using. Three, drown all campfires, then stir and drown again. Four, find out the law before using fire. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. This message has been brought to you as a public service.
Henley sets money. The over two goal. Andy Carey and Johnny Cooks. For the New York Yankees. Don Besson. On the mound. For the Brooklyn Dodgers. Gil Mitchell goes with his wind out to Gilliam and pumped up to Gilliam. And he stops him now as the New Yorkers work behind a 5 to nothing lead. Including three homers, two by Yogi Berra, each with a man on, the other by Elston Howard. The pitch is down the middle, and it's strike one call. Gil Mitchell with the plate. Yankee long ball power has certainly been asserting itself. So far this afternoon. Here it comes, and it's low. One and one to Gil McDougall, who's the only regular on both teams not to have scored a run so far in the series. Gil's been putting on some uh, sparkling uh, plays out there in the field. He steps out of the batter's box now. The wind laughs. Bit of dirt up around home plate. Now, Besson's pitch is over for a false strike in the outside corner. A fastball that really zipped him there. For two strikes and a ball to Gil McDougall. And again, Gil's up the batter's box. They're playing up the just shaded slightly toward the left. Now, both fairly deep out there in left field. And Strider slightly to left center. They took the white. Besson, right hander, starts the wind up. Comes in with a fastball, and it's low. And the count now is two and two to go, leading off in the sixth inning. And this is it. Craig, who was warming up earlier, has gone back to sit down. And Bassett goes back to the mound and picks up the rousing bag. Two and two to McDougal. Now the sign from Campanella. Right after shakes it off with his ball. Now gets the only one. Shot the wind up. Delivers. And there goes a the line shot to left field. It's a base hit for Gil McDougal. Amos fields the ball. And McDougal makes the turn and stays at first base. A leadoff hit here in the sixth. And Andy Carey, who's put on on a walk and also got on on an error by the shortstop, Pee Reese. Now steps in with McDougal on first and nobody out. It's New York, five, Brooklyn, nothing. Carey batting eight. There's a throw over to first base by Besson, and McDougal is back in plenty of time. Here's the pitch, and it's wide. Ball one to Andy Carey. Up with a uh, fine defensive play in the uh, preceding inning. Besson on the mound. Don Newcomb started the ball game. Yielded all of the runs so far. As they throw to first base, and McDougal gets back. All of the uh, New York runs came on holders. Two by Yogi Berra, each with a bat on, and one by Elston Howard. Here's the pitch, and has a foul off to the right, going up over the roof. One and one, the carry who steps out as Campanella runs up a new ball. After the Elston Howard holder to lead off the uh, fourth inning, Newcomb was replaced by Don Besson, who since has used two hits, a two bag of the mantle, and this lead off single in the sixth inning to Gil McDougal. Back carry waiting. A stretch from the pause by Besson. And a throw to first base. McDougal back to the bag. Gill wasn't too far off base. Carey stands deep in the bottom box. Again, get out of waiting. Here it comes. And there's a slow ground just by the pitcher to Reese, who takes from the grass, throws one to first, and scooped up by Hodges for the out. Fine play by. Gil Hodges scooping up that low throw. That was a slow one, which just went to the left of the mound. And Reese had to come in on the infield grass. Hurry is slow. Good. Good play by the shortstop. To get Andy Carey. And the McDougal moved to second on the put out.
Johnny Cox. Who's off for one, the sacrifice comes up now with Gilma Jogel on second. One out. And that's the sixth inning. Cooks chokes up on the back. Right hand batter looks at a call strike one. The Yankees have five runs and seven hits. And the Dodgers, no runs and one hit. That one came back in the uh, first inning. Cooks strike one the count. Here's the next one, and there's one which is the foul back. Strike two. Fox has choked far up on that bat. A long, thin handle. Johnny is far up, about a third of the way up on the bat. McDougal on second, and one away. The outfield is playing Fox to hit that ball late. They're playing him around toward right and in. A curve is wide of the plate. And the count now is two strikes and a ball. Besson bounds that ball to this club. Now, what's in to get the side? Campanella. McDougal leading off second. Stretch the pause. And here comes the pitch. A swing and a miss. And Cooks goes out on a strikeout. That makes it two away for the Google on second base, and it brings up Hank Bauer to let off the ball game with a single to left center field. They just stole second and came in to score on Barrows Homer. Since that time, Bauer has booked it and gone out and dropped it out. Bauer and Vera lead both clubs in hits with nine apiece. So Hank steps in there in the leadoff role playing right field. McDougal on second, two away. Here it comes. And there's a pop-up to the right side near the line. Hodge is waiting, straddles the line, and takes it just in foul territory. Behind first base. So, then they top of the sixth line. No runs. A hit. No errors. And one left. And the score. After the middle of the sixth, the New York Yankees five, the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. Well, we certainly got a big kick seeing uh, Casey Stengel's excitement as he patted his home run sluggers when they came back to the dugout. You know, Casey's like a father to all of his boys, and they're all out for him. They take it to heart when he tells them to act like champions and look like champions. Neat, clean shade. Casey sets a good example. He shaves with a Gillette Super Speed Razor and recommends they do the same. Now, if you haven't caught up with those three Gillette Super Speed Razors, the light, regular, and heavy, it's high time you did. One has the right weight edge exposure and will weight to match your skin beard. Quick shaves, good looking shaves, man, real refreshing shaves are positively guaranteed. A dollar is all it costs you to see. That's the regular price of a Gillette Super Speed Razor and its useful travel case with a dispenser of super keen Gillette Blue Blades. And that's not all. Today, that handy 320-page encyclopedia of baseball comes attached, and it's free. Dale Mitchell, that's the Besson, in a home six. Left-handed batter, and it's ball one. Dale was up there for the last strikeout of that perfect game, that Larson pitch. Here it comes, and it's over for a strike call. Stop one and one. Johnny Cooks delivers and delivers low. Count is two balls to strike. The Dodgers have made five hits and one run the last 24 innings against Larson, Turley, and Cooks. Mitchell fouls one off to the left as he moves back from an inside pitch. The ball just glanced off his back, and it's two and two. Roger Quay warming up in the bullpen for Brooklyn. As the Dodgers trail in the ballgame by a 5 up score, and 
This is the home six on the way. Books. All ready. Here's the right hand is pitch. And there's a grounder going out to McDougal. He's up with it. Throws to first base. Fully out. Into a first down on the home six. And we have a moment before Jim Gilliam steps in. So let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. And this is CKLW, your World Series station in this area. 800 on your dock. Gilliam swings to the first pitch and a little lighter to Billy Martin for the out. Gilliam lining to Martin, a low liner right to the second baseman. And there are two away as Pee Wee Reese, who has drawn two walks, comes up with nobody of ours. Folks, a low ball pitcher has been getting these Brooklyn Dodgers to hit that ball into the ground, or these low liners. The first pitch moves Reese back, he falls to the ground, and it's ball one. to Pee Reese, two away. Hook starts the wind-up, here comes the next pitch, and it's high, and the count now is ball two. So far, the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers have a one hit. That was Snyder's single in the third. And thus far, the only Yankee outfielder to register any pull is Elston Howard with two. A strike is called as Reese takes letter high. And it's now two balls and strike one in the tall six to Pee Wee Reese with two away. Mitchell on a ground out and Gilliam on a line out. Post delivers and there is a foul going off to the right. Not a play and the countdown to Reese is two and two. That ball pop up, up above and down below. Some more spectator grabs it. Foul ball. It's two and two to Reese. We've seen some magnificent pitching in the series by each side. Two and two. But the next one is a curve missing the inside corner. And it goes to three and two on Reese, who has drawn two walks. And incidentally, the only two walks that folks has given up so far this afternoon. Be we with a very keen eye at the plate. for the three and two pitch. On the way. It's popped up. McDougal waiting for it. Here he comes to the side. McDougal calls and makes the cut. Billy Marcus, he was over there looking on. So, on the pop up to McDougal, the side retired with no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. The score after six innings. The Yanks five, the Dodgers nothing.
Frey, 25 years old. Comes from Durham, North Carolina. He's a big, tall fellow, six feet four. This past season, he had 12 wins, 11 losses. And Craig is all set to work now as Martin Hughes once before he steps in on the seventh. And he gets on the way. Craig was the starter in the third game against Whitey Ford. And in the series, he is no wins and one loss. So Martin up there at the plate waiting. And the first pitch comes in low for the ball. Ball one to Billy Martin. Martin. Struck on. He's single to center. He's grounded out. Four, five, nothing. The Yankees are leading. Craig's pitch is low. Ball two, the count to Martin. Martin is a fellow who can really roam around that infield. And he likes to make sure. We've seen him operate now from his second base position and come over. Out of the third base side on those pop-ups. The ball's up in the air. Billy wants to be near it. Real hustler. Here's the pitch. He cuts and misses. It's ball two and strike one. And now in the uh, Brooks bullpen, Carl Erskine starts warming up. Martin up there in the outfield is slightly around toward left. Two balls and a strike. There's a line drive, and Tomo Reese's shot going out to left center field by head. Snyder moves over to field the ball, and Martin, after making the turn, stays at first base with a second hit. Billy Martin with a leadoff single here. In the top of the seventh. And Mickey Mantle, who took ball off the center field wall. His last time off, after striking out twice prior to that, steps up here for his fourth at bat. Martin is on first base. Nobody out on the top of the seventh. Scoring Yanks five, Brooklyn nothing. The Yankees have eight hits to the Dodgers one. Craig with a strike to the pause. And the pitch to Mantle is wide of the plate for ball one. On deck is a fellow who's really been swinging a bat in this game, Yogi Berra. And... Little inspection of the baseball by Dusty Vargas for plate. He decides another one should be put in play. Or Campanella is giving it a little rubbing before sending it out to Craig. It's been Newcomb, Besson, and Craig. So far in this game, the deciding game for the World Championship. Now already, the pitch is a curve which breaks over at the knees. And it's now a one-on-one -on -one count to Mantle as he took it for a call strike. Robot has joined Erskine, warming up for the Brooks. Robinson has moved in on the infield grass. Martin on first, one-on-one -on -one the count. Mantle takes high, and the count now is two balls and strike one. When you deal with that one-two bunch of Mantle and Barron pleasure, Pitcher really has his work cut out for him. A wind sweeps across the mound, raising up a bit of a dust storm there, and the time is called. Mantle stepped out, now he's back in. Looks out toward the mound. It's two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. And a curve drops low and inside. And the count now of three balls and strike one to Mantle. Rillo is far back there and right from Snyder in deep right center. And Ambrose is way over in left center field. All the way back for Mantle. <laughs> Mantle and Vera each have had three homers in this series. Three balls and a strike. The pitch is wide and Mantle walks, bringing up Yogi Berra. Second base. Mantle is on first base, and Yogi Berra, who has had two two run homers, and drew an intentional walk last time up. It comes up now in this seventh inning with two aboard and nobody out. 
Barrows had 10 RBIs in this series for a new record. Most ever before, nine by Lou Gehrig back in 1928, four-game set. So Yogi's in there. And the first pitch is a wild one going right by Campanella. Mark goes to third, Fatal to second. Second. Meanwhile, Campanella moves out to speak to a picture for a moment. And they're going to put Vera on. The official score is ruled out a wild bit. And Farrell will be given the rest of the transportation to first base. So he'll be given an intentional walk now. Yogi moves to first base with two intentional walks and two two run homers this afternoon. And this blows the sacks. Martin is at third, Mantle at second, Farrell on first, and the batter, Bill Scallon. Garren is hooked up, and he's popped up twice. Roger Quigg on the mound, and the uh, Dodgers now bring the infield in. Charles to put us all off the infield glass. The runners Martin Mantle and Barra. And the score, 5 nothing with the New York Yankees leading. Scour right hand and batter steps in. Here comes the pitch, and there goes a the five ball to deep left field. Hammers is going back, it is a home run! A grand slam homer! Baseball, the uh, grand slammer by Cowan. The 
was the sixth. In World Series history, others, Dallas, Mantle, McDougal, Rosarius, Elmer Smith, and Al Scowers in the book, too. And as you can see, it's well dominated by uh, Yankee players. So we have a fourth picture on the mound now. Ed Robot takes over. Coming in here into the play in the seventh inning. And entering the ball game with nobody out. In this play, Martin started off with a single left center. And then Mantle. On the wild pitch play, both moved up, and the now was a quarter and central walk for the rest of the way. And then Scarlett, that one out to left, and the face for a glass left over. Now it is just a two dagger off the bench in right center, and the batter is Gilbert Google, the face robot. Nobody out.
Bob gives the fourth. Brooklyn Victor, Newton Shorter, Van Bessel, and Craig and their robots. Erskine keeps warming up in the bullpen. Score 9-0 New York. Here's the pitch. It's wide, a curveball. Terry almost went for it. He, the umpire says it's up the corner, and Terry is out. And he started a swing that time, held up on the swing. He stood there at the plate, Justin Rogers. That's great play. The ball popped it on a cat. Now it's ready. Picked it up. Touch Terry, and it's a strikeout. For out number two. That brings up Johnny Cox for two outs from his seventh inning. Yankee pilot, Joe McCarthy, won seven. 
The handiest horse I know for information like this is just off the press. It's a compact, pocket-sized digest of the big $5.95 official encyclopedia of baseball that's yours absolutely free with purchase of the Gillette Blazer in the regular fight. Here's the cream of the big book. Major League player roster, nicknames, first dates, lifetime records, how they bat and throw, diagrams of seating plans and playing areas, league leaders and batting runs, hits, homers, and 1876. World Series scores and summaries, plus series record of every player ever in the game, Hall of Fame, All-Star Game results, and a lot more. This valuable book is free when you buy the Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and Travel Case at a regular price. One dollar. Better get yours soon. They're going fast. This player plays off. And the first pitch is strike one call. Slater has the only hit so far of Johnny Cook, the single on the first inning. Inside, Snyder started to go for it, held up. And it's one and one. There's a ball which is popped up. And any carry happens. The New York Yankees, Ford and Griff, are lobbing it out there in the bullpen outside the left field line. But the Yankees right now are working behind a 9 to nothing lead. Robinson to the batter, strike one to count. A curveball breaks over the knees for a call strike two. Johnny Cook making tremendous use of that curveball this afternoon. He's yielded only one hit so far today. He's given up two walks, both three. Dick comes to the ball. Counts two strikes from the ball to Jackie Robinson. Robinson grabbed it into a double play, and he uh, put it and fouled out. Back in the fourth inning. There's the pitch ball. Counts two and two. Third 
There's one out and one on. The score nine. I'll say the New York Yankees are leading in this deciding game. There's a foul going back and off to the left. And it's now strike two to Joe Hodges. This is a home seventh. All games dominated so far this afternoon by Yankee Power and superb pitching by their young right-hander, who is the youngest pitcher on the staff. So it's 23 years old. Snyder is waiting and has it. Bauer 
ball is out. Before Martin steps in, let's take this moment to pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is useful radio network for all America. You will see a station in this area is CKLWAM and FM 800 on your dial. It's now two minutes past two. Well, that's the end of the first half. Well, Billy goes out to take a bit of paper off from bottom hole plate, puts it onto his side. Now he's back to the battle box swing with a one strike count. A curve is too close from the count out of one and one to Billy. Martin so far in this game has two before. Both pitches and singles, one to center, one with the left center. Robot starts the wind up, delivers. And Martin cuts for Tiffin for strike two. Two strikes in the ball. Tiger fans have not had anything uh, really to cheer about this afternoon. As the Yankees have passed their spell of the Brooklyn this afternoon by the tune of a 9 nothing score. A curve is missed by Martin as he goes down swinging. And they're two away in the top of the eighth. Mickey has walked out first two times off, double the center, and walked his last time at the plate. So Mickey steps there, batting left handed with two outs. The pitch is strike one called on the inside corner. A man all is just an acquiring glance back at the umpire now steps back in. Strike one, the man over. Two away on the top of the eighth. Outfield deep. The pitch is too high. And the count now is one and one to the Yankees fighter. Yanks in the series. A new series record for a home run. Well, we'll get it. One and one to count. And the pitch comes in wide. Two balls and a strike. For the uh, New York Yankees, Mantles has three homers, Sarah three, Martin two, Dower one, Sparta one, and Howard and Scowlin one apiece. by one team of the series. Here it comes, and a crisis call. The count now is two and two to Mantle. Two out, nobody aboard. They're not using the Mantle chip. Yes, uh, Gilliam and Hodges on the right side. Reese is over close to second on the left side, and Robinson is quite away from the line. Two and two to count. Robot starts the wind up, and the right-hander delivers. Inside, a fastball for three and two. It's amazing you'll see now Casey Single with two new men in the lineup today, Scowlin and Howard. Howard, Homer, and Scowlin. They can over the first base and a grand slammer. Three and two to Mickey Mantle. Here's the pitch. And Mickey goes down swinging. The Yankees have been going for that long ball, but in the tight games, we've seen some great fights, and there's nobody better than Gil McDougall when it comes to laying them out. Gil made a special recording to tell you how he lays out a sacrifice, and here he is with Mel Allen. Gil, that fun of yours looks different. What's the story? For one thing, Mel, you know, that's why like both hands up the back, take an easy grip, just meet the ball, and drop it down a baseline. Thanks, Gil. Mel Ryan's telling the fans how you 
get those quick, refreshing shaves? That's a cinch. Just take an easy grip on my Gillette razor and a minute. A mighty savvy lamb, that you, McDougal. How about you? Are you enjoying those easy, good-looking shaves you get with a razor that matches your face? If not, better look over those green Gillette Super Seeds. A light, regular, and heavy. One has a precise blade edge exposure and one weight to suit your particular combination of skin and beard. Dollar buys the razor, the left blue blade dispenser, travel gate, and while they last, you get the best pocket encyclopedia of baseball free. The bottom of the eighth, and Sandy Ambrose sweeps off. Here's the pitch, and it's right one call. Johnny Cook gave up a single with a man on first and one out. In the first, that's all. There's a ground ball going to the first base from Scowlin. He's over to the bag, and Amos is out. Amos has gone out three times on a ground out, a fly ball, and another ground out. And Cook continues to keep the Brooklyn Dodgers hitting that ball here at the ground. That's in the pattern right throughout this game. Only two outfield put outs. Game is three. Dave Ruth gets three 
Coleman is in two different Phillies games. That's the record for one player. Back in 1926 against the Cards, and in 28 against the Cardinals. On each occasion, he had two successive home runs in the second of innings. So Barrett comes up there now, and the Knights lead off. He swings and the line drive, and Gilliam leaps and pulls it in. Jim Gilliam, weak side of Owen Zyle's liner. The dugout after a tremendous afternoon with two two run homers. Here's Jarvis, who had a grand slammer to left. His last time off. Hurricane pitch is over the outside corner for a called strike. Right hand delivers, and there's a ground ball to Joyce. Reese comes up with it. Throws the high dude. Nina Slaughter, so many. There's a foul back. Just over my head. 
And the count is one and one. And today, of course, you'll be down. Bill Scowlin, Johnny Cook. The Dodgers. That one run and six hits in the last 27 innings. As New York Yankee pitching. As really come to the fore. Here comes the pitch. There's a punt that's popped up, and Yogi Berra makes the catch in foul territory. Bill Snyder is coming up with two outs. And folks, let me remind you to about this. When the game ends, you'll hear interviews direct from the Big Two Clubhouse, so stay tuned.
Field. And Evans Field is the same side. Everybody congratulating the Yankees. This broadcast is authorized on the broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication we broadcast or the use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. And now to wind up this World Series broadcast, let's pick up Mel Allen, some of those victorious Yankees. Okay, Mel, I'll take over. Here is Gil McDougall, the world champion New York Yankees. Now, Gil will be the champion. Great, and I hope it stays for another five years or ten years, as long as I want to. What did you think about the outcome of the series before the Dodgers made a game after losing that tremendous game to the Dodgers yesterday? Well, you know, it's amazing. I must, uh, I, I say, I, I told him that I was so easy. Yeah. Right. I said it was going to turn out the same way as it did last year, except for the reverse, that's what it did. Oh. All right, Gail, good luck to you. Know, this time, you're not going to Japan. And here, over here, Elson Howard, come here right quick. Elson, you got into his first World Series game, and you got your second World Series home run. Oh, John, here's the one he's throwing you. He's throwing you a slow change of uh, Mel and I. He's down there, and he hit the ball, and we're raising no fence. Well, now you've uh, had yourself two World Series homers. Right? Two World Series homers. Three or three, three. I mean, that was really nice because I did the Oscars. Yeah. All right, good luck to you. Yeah, let me get over here now. Who are we? Here, Commissioner Ford Frick. Here's Commissioner Ford Frick. Uh, another great series. Oh, it was a terrific series. Well, I have seen a lot of World Series in my life, and I don't think I ever saw one that had everything in it like this one. Yes, I 
told him to go up and uh, get ready because I had Carlos prepared to hit for any hitter in the lineup except about four or five if it came in the case where I had to take out a second baseman to a stop or an outfield. Thank you very much, KP. I don't tell Webb to the Yankees, standing behind one. I hope congratulations to you. Well, it was a great ball game, Kate. You know that Chuck Spencer really played the great ball game, and he never struck out a man until he finally struck out Hobbins in the last inning. He had uh, tremendous control as well. Joe set up by Joe Spencer. He got to beat that ball in the ground, which he did. Followed by Billy Martin. Pick it up and throw him out. Here's Billy Martin. Billy. You were the hero of the last Yankees World Championship game, is that right? Well, 1953. That's right, a long time ago, Mel. You got the 12 hits that drove in and went you on the ninth inning. Yes, I did, Mel. Well, what about today's game that gave you the most uh, thrill outside of the winning of it? The way Johnny caught the kick. He was just crazy. He had all the heart in the world, Mel. Well, here's the guy, and Yogi Berra, who got the Yankees off with two consecutive home runs off Don Gisler. Yogi? I believe I had a greater World Series. Oh, this is my first one, though. Um, you hit three consecutive homers off you can feel. Remember, you hit one off him and you knocked him out earlier in the year. No, this is the uh, first time I ever hit him. So good. This is the third year. What about Johnny Cook now? You handled him. Well, John, uh, I know he was due for a good game now. Of course, he had now he was getting his uh, lump there, but uh, if he ever had his control, he'd be rough. He's got a good sinker ball. Today. If you call for one any more than others, well, I'd say the sinker ball a little more than I did the strike. Well, you know, one thing about Johnny Cook, that he's not a favorite anybody, is it? Well, that's for sure, Mel. It's years ago, I don't know. How about the time you came up with runners on first and second, and they got a wild pitch? You put Johnny, you think the moose was on a belt one minute? Oh, moose was too, Mel. He was too. And you had a grand slammer earlier in this uh, series. That's the second time that Slim Dunn and Matthew did not the last five times. Uh, that's very good. I'm glad to see you two Okay, Yogi. Let's see. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Mr. Harris, you'll come up here. Here it is, Mr. William Harris. Where's the American lady? Mr. Harris, congratulations. That was a great, great ball game. A great series and a wonderful finish for the last evening. Well, we're proud. Congratulations to you on recapturing the championship, Mr. Harris. We're very glad to have it back in our league now. You know that. Thank you, sir. Now, if we can get Moose Gallup. Give me Jim Turner. Jim Turner. Hey, Jim. Jim, come here. Jim Turner. Here's Tom Sturdivant. Come on up, Tommy. Uh, I'm going to get... Here's Tom Sturdivant over here and Jim Turner. Uh, we're trying to find Johnny. Can you get him? Jim Turner's a pitching coach. Uh, Jim, would you holler at Johnny while I have Tom Sturman, one of the other coaches, about the great game? Well, uh, doing the one is so great, Mel, after the last three that you've been for it. Well, that was a good game that you did this. You're in battle. Thank you very much, Mel. I was out here. I won't win. Well, you certainly did, of course. Uh, we can only get Johnny. You know, you're one of the few infielders ever turned pitcher to come back in my World Series game. Yeah. Well, it's a great thrill, Mel. Thank you, Tom Sturdivant. And uh, here, here is uh, Jim Turner. Jim, Tom Sturdivant uh, was an infielder, of course, and we like to get Bill really to get cleaned up. He did a great job with these pitchers that uh, came back to win this series, such as Cook and Sturdivant. Well, Mel, I don't think lost a heartbreaker yet. Uh, Mel, I don't think I've made any of the pitchers in any of the, any of the games, but... Uh, Feeling going along with him was every catch. And I want to congratulate you. I haven't got to talk to John before, Lord. You did a great job, boy. That's one of the best ball games you've ever seen. You've done this ball club. And I'm the set. And uh, I think it's remarkable that these kids could come through a series like this. And they're all fairly young. And there's three shutouts. And now, yesterday we lost the ball game. But, but it's after all with the shutout, nine innings wide. And we got three shutouts in the row. In fact, the last three games were decided by a shutout. That is right, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, a 
John is to be credited a lot for pitching such a great ball game on the such rest. It's the seventh game he has always had a world series and also in a small ballpark like this. But well, the pitcher gets a real good ball call. Well, Johnny being just 23 years old, how did you feel about pitching the most important ball game in your career? Well, um, well uh, I was a little nervous like any young kid would be before the game and all that, but I was bringing myself to another ball game. All I got to do is keep around back and forth as long as I can to a guy like Ford and save in the book. And I figure I have to sit a little tougher than you. Well, you know, Jim, you remember in spring training a year ago, this boy had just come back out of the Army. He had one year of uh, minor league experience, been in the Army two years, and you put him out against Puffman in spring training, and the bases were loaded, nobody out. What happened? Well, he picked out of it. Remember what happened there? Well, they got Hodges to pop up and yank it off to hit him in the double play. You never thought you'd do that in the World Series. No, no, no. Real happy. Uh, yeah, good luck to you tonight. Thank you. Just like that, Mel. Just watch you had on the inside. And he showed you today. He had it on the inside. Right. Thanks a lot, Jim Turner. And here's George White, fellow manager of the Yankees, who has done a tremendous job, the greatest fellow manager in baseball. Congratulations. Uh, Lot now. Very happy. Thank you. Well, let me ask you this. I suppose there were times when you doubted the outcome. I suppose there were. Uh, well, right next to you, Mr. Waller O'Malley, president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, who won the world title from you last year, and here he is now to wish you the same as you wish him here. Thank you, Mel. I'm very happy that you have an idea of hitting that first pitch that he got up there on the base of the motor. I was a little bit scared. I came to call me back and 
Well, for Ben Chitter. Well, you know, I just asked him about that. He said, no, he thought you had Colin Gray for somebody else, but not Ben Chitter. That's right. And then when I uh, got to the play at Joe Campanella as a champion, I sure was going to think I'd be up here hitting. I think I was Ben Chitter. Yeah. He said, hang in there, Moose. And that was it. I hit the first ball here. Well, congratulations to you. Thanks to you, Moose Cowan. I hope you pass and enjoy hearing from these very happy Yankees. But the cavalcade of sports carries on. Every Friday night, Gillette Air is the major boxing bout of the week. So plan to tune in and enjoy the excitement. This is Mal Allen saying smooth sailing, smooth shaking. And good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company. This is the Info, the radio network for all America. This is CKLW and FM 800 on your dial. Now the time to call for call. The RSV Cola Building Supply Company at Valley 2, 3460. Order Cherry Glow Cola. It's America's finest Coca Cola. It costs no more than ordinary coal. And you can pay on easy credit terms. So call for coal. Call RSV at Valley 2, 3460. At Valley 2, 3460. Thank you now for the news. Stay tuned, fans. Here's the World Series wrap-up with Charlie Gresson and yours truly, Rex Barney. Brought to you by Viceroy, the cigarette with 20,000 filters in every tip for a smooth, smooth taste. The smoothness of rich, mellow tobacco, which makes Viceroy the winner in big league smoking. Now for highlights of today's game, here is Viceroy's baseball expert and manager of the Washington Senators, Charlie Gresson. Hello, fans. Once again, the New York Yankees are the world champions. For 1957, that's for sure, and winning it in great style today by the score of 9 to nothing. Charlie, uh, what about the outlook of today's game? A couple things. Of course, great pitching and great hitting on behalf of the Yankees, which every manager in baseball hoped for throughout the season, got together and uh, combined to win this ball game. How about this uh, super pitching the Yankees have had in these closing three games? Well, Rex, I'll have to say this, it was surprising to me because everybody in the American League uh, classed the Yankees as the best team from the American League, but uh, weak pitching. And I'll have to say this, the pitching since the second game has been great. I think it's been a lot better than it was in the American League. Well, because the boys have pitched today and pitched that great game, and I could see the way he was pitching, and as Yogi said, he was pitching a lot of sinkers, which would make him hit the ball on the ground, and he did that. I, uh, I think there was only two balls hit to the outfield for about the ninth inning, two flies to the left field. So on many occasions this past summer, we knocked him out of the box, and uh, but he has pitched some good games because he's got a good record of 18 and 90. Well, the fans today were able to hear and watch, and many of them on television here on radio, that Phil Scarlin was the sixth man in World Series history to hit a Grand Slam home run, which certainly aided the Yankee car. And you know, Charlie, Bill Scarlin is another ball player who has switched over to Vice Roy. These athletes are mighty fussy about their cigarette brand, and like the rest of us, like thoughtful people everywhere, they pick the cigarette with most filters for the smoothest taste. Believe me, when you find big leaguers like Mickey Mantle and Bill Scarlin and golfing stars like Dr. Kerry Middlecoff smoking the same brand, that's some recommendation for Vice Roy. Fans, are you one of the thousands of men and women who are about to change to a silver cigarette? Well, the time to change is now, and the silver cigarette to choose is Viceroy. There's a good reason. Only Viceroy has 20,000 silvers in every tip. Twice as many silvers as the two other largest selling silver brands for that smooth, smooth taste. The smoothest of rich, mellow tobacco, which makes Viceroy the winner in big league smoking. So don't wait another day. Change now to Viceroy for smoother taste ensured by 20,000 silvers. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, thousands of people every day are changing to filter cigarettes. Make your decision now. Change to Viceroy. Well, Charlie, you're talking about that great pitching of Johnny Cooks. Uh, incidentally, the Dodgers in the last 28 innings have only made one run, and in the last 28 innings of World Series play, they only had seven hits. Now, I would have to say that uh, the Dodger hitting department failed them slightly. 
Yeah, it looked like in the second game that the Dodgers were going to have a good hitting series because they finished up the National League season in uh, great style in the way of hitting and pitching also. But after that second game, actually going up to the Yankee Stadium, which is a larger part, I think probably gave uh, some of those pitchers some confidence and Ford pitched that game. And then along come uh, Sturdivant, the young fellow, and pitched another good game in that great game that Larson pitched. And then listen to Day, and not mention the two games yesterday. They were terrific. That was, it was great to see two pitchers pitch like that on both sides. But it's a funny thing about baseball. After you pay us a lot of money to hit, and then you pay the pitcher a lot of money to get them out. But it shows what a great thing. I repeated that, and I said that, say it time and time again. When a pitcher's got control of that ball, it don't mean the difference who they hit it is. When he does where he wants to, it's going to be tough to score, and regardless of the part. You know, the story of the World Series, the Dodgers had 42 hits in seven games, and they only had three home runs. Now, this is a club that is loaded with home run power. The Yankees, on the other hand, had 58 hits and a grand total of 12 home runs, so which, incidentally, is another World Series record for home runs in one series. The thing that I was happy to see today, Joe Scowron, who was 0 for 4 in the first ball game, and Austin Howard, who had not been in the lineup the last couple weeks of the season and made his appearance in his first World Series, came through with home runs in great style and, of course, helped to win that uh, title, that 12 home runs in one World Series. Now, Scowron and Howard, uh, you have seen them through the entire season. Uh, in your opinion, what makes them such outstanding players, especially in that class? Well, the, first of all, they got a lot of power. They got strength. Both of them can hit a ball to any field, right field, or left field can hit over any fence. As I know the games we played them during the summer, they showed that. And uh, that's one thing about the Yankee Club. I know that they got a bench there. They can change. The teams can change any time. If one fellow's not hitting, then he goes to another park, and he's got a, a fellow like Skarn, uh, like Brooklyn Park, I'd say he's made the order point. He can change his lineup and put a fellow in like that. And I think he made the change today because he wanted to give a slaughter a rest because the season's over. But he was, you know, always played uh, very few games of six games in a row during the season. But with Skarn in there, I think he figured that maybe he could hit a couple out of park or one other part, which he did. So I'll say Casey Cole the right ones out of the bag. You know, Johnny Cox was absolutely brilliant today. He's the youngest pitcher on the Yankee staff. He's 22 years of age and one of the youngest pitchers ever to win a World Series game. And coming from here in the New York area, it's really something. That's his first World Series win and only his third year in organized baseball. One of your favorite players, and of course the country's favorite players, came through in great fashion today by hitting uh, home runs number one and two in the, in the game, and in second and third in the series, all three off of Newcomb. And a strange thing, uh, Yogi Berra had ten RBIs in the series, and eight of those RBIs off of Newcomb. How about your man, Berra? Well, the next I predicted before the series, and in fact, the last series we played with him, I said, Bear is the most dangerous hitter on the club. And he got away with something yesterday, of course, it was a percentage play when he walked Mantle to bring Bear up, and he hit the, and he figured he hit one on the ground when he popped up. So he knows that Bear is a dangerous hitter. He don't have a hit for a high average, but he drives in important runs, and he gets them in key games. I think he's one of the most valuable players. I would say he's the most valuable player on the New York Yankees. The Yankees had a lot of great stars in the series, and so did the Dodgers in every respect. I don't think that you can label anyone the GOAT of this series. Charlie, before we run down the final box score in today's game, let me ask our listeners a question. Are you one of the thousands of men and women who are about to change to a filter cigarette? Well, listen, there's a good reason to change to Viceroy today. Yes, there's a good reason to change to Viceroy today. It's smoother by far than the cigarettes you are now smoking. For Viceroy has 20,000 filters in every tip made from pure cigarettes. Soft, snow white, natural. That's twice as many filters as the other two largest selling filter brands. That's why the Viceroy taste is never rough. Never, no, never rough. It's smoother by far than the cigarette you are now smoking. Smoother than any other cigarette in the world. A smoother taste of Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filters in your Smoke smoother Viceroy. For the final 
run down on the seventh game, the Yankees being the world champions. They had nine runs on ten hits. They made no errors. The Dodgers, no runs on three hits. They made one error. In the series, the umpires were absolutely great. Dave Finelli, Dusty Barger, Tom Gorman, Hank Thor, Larry Knapp, and, of course, Ed Rungi. Charlie, where do you think the two clubs will be going to now, Brooklyn and the Yankees? Well, they're going to. Well, I understand that Brooklyn's taking off tomorrow for Japan. The Yankees, I know this, go to all parts. Most of them live in California, or a lot of them, except the pitcher that fits today. Of course, there isn't a lot of those boys from California, so they'll start going out, getting ready to go hunting or take up something else. Some of them go into business, but they'll, they'll get ready now for have a nice win and get ready for next spring. All right, Charlie, one last reminder, fans. Remember, get your Viceroy real soon. This has been the World Series Wrap-Up with Charlie Dresden and yours truly, Rex Clark. Brought to you by Viceroy. The cigarette with 20,000 filters in every tip for that smooth, smooth taste. The smoothness of rich, mellow tobaccos which make Viceroy the winner in big league smoking. Fans, it has been a great pleasure and a sincere pleasure for us to bring you the warm-up shows and the wrap-up shows before and after each World Series game. On behalf of uh, Harry Wisler and our Viceroy baseball expert, Charlie Dresson, our producer Joe Keating, our engineer this afternoon, Harry Bryant, and our other engineers throughout these warm-up and wrap-up shows. Uh, for Viceroy, it has been a great pleasure. And once again, remember, get your Viceroy's real soon. This is Beach Road, the radio network for all America. You are tuned to the Fiber Station, CKLW, and I have an up and 800 on your dial. Stay tuned now for five minutes of the class series, be followed by music over the 800 spot in your dial.